Today in this video, we're going to take a look at the JBL Flip 5 Bluetooth speaker. Okay, I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible. I'm not the first one to uh, give a review on the JBL Flip 5. In fact, as, as far as I'm concerned, I'm way behind the curve as far as other reviewers go. However, I want to give you my take on this because when I do my reviews, I actually spend long periods of time with these things. I actually have them in hand. I put them in every test scenario that I can possibly think of. So I'm just not like one of those guys that's like, yeah, I've used it for six minutes. I'm going to make a video on it. Yeah, yippee. No, I don't do that. I really run these things through their paces. This unit's been out in the garage with me. Uh, it's been um, outside in the yard. It's been in the shower. Um, actually, I did a video on that. I really like this uh, speaker. This is a very loud and punchy speaker. This, I'm a Klitsch horn guy, and this reminds me of like a Klitsch home speaker. Very loud, very throaty, can definitely fill a room. And then when you put this up against a wall, it gets really mid bassy sounds really good. Um, if it's just out in the open, it's a little shy on uh, low frequency response. However, when you, like I say, put it up against a wall or maybe set it in, the, in a kitchen setting or in a window seal, it becomes not only throaty, but very bassy. And that's because it has passive radiators on each end. Okay, so that's pretty nice. That is basically the, the, the secret to the sound. And then it has a very good driver setup in it as well. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'll go over some of the user functions. Back here we have the on-off switch. This is the Bluetooth pairing button here. And then right over here is a uh, long LED light hidden back there. And that is for a battery status indicator. It does not stay on all the time. It stays on for the first while after you turn the speaker on and off. One thing I like about this JBL speaker is you don't have to play around like you do with some of the off-brand speakers with the on-off switch. You don't have to push and hold it for two or three seconds or push it and hold it uh, for like 15 seconds to get into pairing mode. You just momentarily push it once. It's on. You get your battery level indicator. Push it again momentarily. It's off. It's as simple as that. Same thing with the Bluetooth pairing. So I really like that. You guys, JBL, you guys did a really good job on that. I really like that. Okay, so this button over here is the party boost button. This will link allow you to link up um, a lot of different JBL speakers to this to make like a left and right stereo pair or just keep daisy chaining a bunch of speakers and um, you could set them around the yard or maybe some of your buddies have some of these and you can link them all together. So that's kind of neat. All right, and then volume uh, minus and plus, plus and minus over here, up, down. All right, and then this little delta style button right here. This is play and pause button. So you momentarily push and it will pause whatever you're listening to and momentarily push it again and it'll play. This works on all of your uh, playlist material on your devices. And like um, I do a lot of Pandora, so this works on Pandora rather well. Okay, and then you double click it like that and it will go to the next track. No track reverse, just only track forward, okay? So, like I said, the little party boost feature here is kind of neat because you can daisy, daisy chain a bunch, bunch of different speakers. So let's go over like what speakers will pair up to this. So this will work in conjunction with up to 14 different Bluetooth speakers. And that will be the JBL Flip 3, 4, and 5, obviously another Flip 5. The JBL Charge 3, 4, and 5, the Pulse 2, 3, and 4, the Boombox 1 and 2, and the JBL Extreme 1, 2, and 3. This also, uh, you can uh, actually run an app on your uh, smartphone, and it used to be called the JBL um, Connect app, but it has now been renamed to the J JBL Portable app. And um, honestly, I think it's kind of a, a useless app but for you guys that like to mess around with apps, um, you know, go for it. Okay, so this has a USB, even though this is this is rated IPX7 as far as being waterproof, which is great. Um, this has an IPX8 uh, USB-C port here, so don't worry about that port being open if you're new to this kind of stuff. That's open, but yeah, it's, it's waterproof. But I got to be honest with you, my last JBL Flip 4 
uh, died an early death because I kept dumping the thing, dunking the thing in water, taking it in the shower, and really abusing it. It actually just made it over its warranty period before it died. So let me tell you, they're rated for that kind of stuff. But you know, um, if you if you want this thing to last, just don't do it. Don't you know? Don't dump it in water. I used to review these things, and I and I would dump them down in a bucket of water and stuff. And every single one of those speakers, after a couple of years, ended up dying. I'd tear them apart, and yes, I would find corrosion in certain areas of them, and that's what did it. So, let's call this water resistant in real world, okay? So the JBL Flip Five has an amplifier that puts out 20 watts RMS. It's 7.1 inches long. It's about 2.9 inches in diameter, weighs 1.19 pounds. It comes with a really nice little 48 inch uh, charge cord, USB-C charge cord. And I like it because it's labeled JBL because I have like a hundred of these cords laying around in various drawers. And I'm kind of weird. I, I, I try to keep uh, a cord uh, that goes with the corresponding device, and I never do. I get them all mixed up. So anyway, I, I just kind of like that. It's just a little thing. So, you know, there you go. Um, you cannot use this as a hands-free device for your phone. It will not um, um, answer and end phone calls, but that's okay. That's not why I honestly buy a Bluetooth speaker. So anyway, it comes, uh, I think it just does its job very well. I want to say on my parting thoughts with this, um, I'm going to give it an audio review. So here's my audio review. I can just sum this up really easy. It's loud as hell. This thing reminds me of a clip horn. It's just really bright in your face. Um, I really like it. Symbols um, can be distinguished from other instruments, like with a lot of off-brand speakers that just doesn't happen. The high ends are all mashed together. And it kind of gives you an illusion that they're um, separate, but they're not. This does. This um, does that exact same thing that I'm talking about. Symbols and whatnot, it's just kind of all kind of washed together. This, you can tell that, that they're there. They're separate. They're on their own. They're doing their own thing. So I really like it. So it's detailed and very loud. And when you put it back against a wall or something like that, um, you get very good audio quality. All right, let's talk a little bit about range now. Okay, so... Uh, this is my standardized range test, and I actually have these uh, printed up, um, and I've used them with pretty much all of my devices that I have reviewed in the last year, but I've never really shown them on camera. This is just how I kind of keep track of them in-house to say, hey, you know, this one goes pretty good, this one doesn't go too well, um, doesn't have very good distance, etc., etc., but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I should probably just start showing you guys what's going on. Okay, so for a cell phone, I use an old Samsung Galaxy S7. I also use an old uh, Apple iPhone. So this one is using the S7, and this is a, a layout of my house, and all these measurements are within a foot or so of each other. And um, yeah, this is this is a this is a nice way to show you guys what's going on. Okay, so here's my transmitter. My transmitter is right here. My cell phone is my transmitter. It is sitting on a wooden block on my bench, so there is no metal around it to interfere, so I'm trying to get maximum range. The phone is actually sitting vertical like so, okay, to get maximum range. So what it is, is I fire up the phone and the speaker, they're paired together. I walk out of my radio room slash studio, I go out the door, I start walking down the hall, and then I start looking for speakers to cut out. Okay, I get over here into my front room and the JBL started cutting out about right here. And then it cut out a couple times right over here. It cut out quite a bit right here. So I'm going to call this my maximum range, okay? And if I go over here down the hall and kind of veer off to this way over to where my home stereo is at, it doesn't cut out. Now, uh, we're transmitting on roughly 2.4 gigs. So um, it's basically a line of sight transmission. However, I'm a radio guy and I want to argue with that a little bit, but not in this video. So if we're going to go with the line of sight theory, we're going from the transmitter through a closet with shut doors, through the back of the closet, across a stairwell that's all walled off. This is a wall here as well. Kitchen cabinets with all sort of pottery and stuff in here going across the kitchen, going through the fridge, and more cabinets up here. So we've got quite a bit of stuff that it has to go through. So overall, when you snap a line and you go from here to here, and I'm going to use about this center section right here as my reference, 
where it you know gets unpredictable and, and just not listenable that's approximately 35 feet in-house so basically we're just going like this just going through all of these walls right over to here like so all right that's pretty darn respectable i've had other no-name speakers cut out right here in this area now what does that mean i mean yeah it's only like what eight ten feet difference but if you're walking around trying to jam to some tunes or you want to take this thing outside or something like that yeah i mean that 10 feet is kind of a big deal so i'm really impressed with that now, when I use this speaker with my Micus transmitter, I have an old uh, RTX 2.0 transmitter. I'll put the transmitter here. I'll use the extended range antenna, and heck, I'd go outside with this JBL. So anyway, I think that it has a very good receiver in it. When my Flip 4 died, I tore that thing apart, and, I'm, and I made a video on it. I just can't find it. It's on a hard drive somewhere. But what I like about the JBL design is internally, when they um, do the Bluetooth chip, it's not really included on the main amplifier board. It's kind of a, separated away from it. And it has its own distinct little in, in internal antenna, little wire antenna. And I really like that. Um, that's what gives it um, uh, more range. Now, and we're talking receive range, right? Because this is not a transmitter. This is only a receiver. So yeah, pretty good. And you're going to see more of these and um, you'll be able to see what we're doing. Like I said, this was in-house, and I decided to start showing you guys uh, what I do as far as range, te range tests and everything goes. So when you see one of my reviews, and I tell you it has good range, well, that's kind of where I derive that from. So anyway, there you go. That is my take on the JBL Flip 5. Loud as hell. It has about 8 to 10 hours of playtime at high volume. You can go about 10 to 12 hours at uh, lower uh, volumes, and it takes about two and a half hours to charge. Anyway, I like it. Good. I'm going to give it a uh, thumbs up, two thumbs up. So anyway, there you go. The JBL Flip 5, that's my take on it. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, leave questions or comments down below. I'd greatly appreciate it.